everyone. It's good to see you. I need everybody to settle down. All right. You take your seats. And then we are going to pray, okay? We close our eyes and let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much for yet another time to learn about you. We want to thank you for giving us ears that hear and for giving us a mind that will remember what we have been taught. Thank you for helping us to do what the Word of God asks us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Last week, I talked to you about why we do affirmations. Sorry. We have said that affirmations can also be called talking sessions or declarations. And then last week, we talked about why we do affirmations all right so this week we are going to do affirmations about the resurrection resurrection is a big word isn't it yes resurrection the reason why we are doing resurrection is because uh jesus died remember we said we are preparing for easter so jesus died on a friday and then the Bible says he rose on the first day of the week. So our first day of the week is Sunday. All right. So we are not going to talk about um, other stories in between. Okay. We are going to move from the time that Jesus went into Jerusalem and then he cleansed the temple. And then we are going to jump many stories. We are going to go to the resurrection. I hope the Lord will give us time to talk about the other stories that happened in between. Okay. So we are going to talk about resurrection. What is resurrection? Resurrection means that mm, something or someone died and then after they died, they came back to life again. So Jesus died on the cross for our sins and then he resurrected, he came back to life. So for today, we are doing affirmations about the resurrection, okay? Good. You read with me, John 11, 25 to 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Thank you for giving life to everything that is good in my life. Thank you for resurrecting love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness in my life, my family, my nation and the whole world in jesus name i pray amen the next verse is going to be from first peter chapter 1 verse 3 praise be to the god and father of our lord jesus christ in his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead let us pray father in jesus name i praise you for giving me my family my friends my church a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead amen and then our last verse is from philippians chapter 3 verse 10 I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I really want to know Christ. I really want to know the power of his resurrection and be a part of his suffering and to be like him even in his death. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
All right, all right, guys. Now we are going to do praise and worship, okay? Let's stand up, let's stand up and get ready for praise and worship. Searching for an answer, a ray of hope in a hopeless world. Who can we turn to? Where is our rescue? There is someone, he's the answer, he's the light, and he lights the way. name thank you so much for giving us jesus who is the light of the world we welcome you in our hearts that you may shine more and more in our lives in jesus name we pray amen remember last week we learned the new song glorious life okay that's the one we're going to do right now i am unstoppable invincible victorious i can do all things we do it again. I am unstoppable, invincible, victorious. I can do all things. Well done. One more time. I am unstoppable, invincible, victorious. I can do all things. Clap, clap. filled with your glory I'm filled with your grace I am filled with your favor to overcome every challenge that I may face I'm filled with your glory I'm filled with your grace I am filled with your favor to overcome every challenge that I may face. That same power, that same power that conquered the grave lives in me. That same power that rescued the earth lives in me. Oh, 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 oh. I'm reigning, ruling, prevailing. 
several circumstances I'm reigning, ruling, prevailing Over all circumstances I'm blessed, I'm blessed Oh, I'm blessed I live a glorious life I'm blessed, I'm blessed Oh, I'm blessed I live a glorious life We go back to the verse I'm filled with your glory. I'm filled with your glory. I'm filled with your grace. I am filled with your favor to overcome every challenge that I may face. I'm filled. I'm filled with your glory. I'm filled with your grace. I am filled with your favor to overcome every challenge that I may face. That same power, that same power that conquered the grave lives in me. That same power that rescued the earth lives in me. Prevailing over all circumstances, I'm reigning, ruling, prevailing over all circumstances. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, oh, I'm blessed. I live a glorious life. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, oh, I'm blessed. I live a glorious life. We are not going to go to all. Now. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh favor on me. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 from glory to glory. Oh, 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 favor on me. Oh, 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 from glory to glory. One more time. Oh, 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 favor on me. Oh, oh, oh. during the week. Good job. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Remember, we had started to learn Jesus paid it all because we're preparing for Easter. Today is Easter Sunday. So we are going to sing Jesus paid it all. All right. I hear thy Savior say, thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Let's do the verse again. I hear thy Savior say, thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thy all in all. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. All. To him 
my woe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Let's go back right to the top. I hear thy Savior say. I hear thy Savior say, thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thy knowing all. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. All. To him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. One more time. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson on stain, he washed it white as snow. Let's clap for the Lord. <clears throat> Father, we bless your name and worship you. We are very, very grateful that Jesus died for us. We are very grateful that because of his death, his blood washes all our sins. On our own, we cannot make it. So we are very thankful that Jesus died for us and he paid for all our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's clap for the Lord. Well done, guys. Good job. Let's clap for Mr. Koban. Woo! For playing the guitar for us. Koban, look up to the camera. Come on, that's Mr. Coburn. Let's clap for Miss Teacher Prince, Mr. Maximia. All right. Uh, today's story is about the resurrection of Jesus. And like I said, it means that Jesus died and then he came back to life. Um, or oh, it's the big word resurrection. It also means that he died and he rose again. Jesus is not dead, okay? Jesus is alive. And today's story, it comes from Matthew 28, verses 1 to 10. You can also find it in the book of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 to 11. Uh, you can find it in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 1 to 12. And you can find it in John chapter 20, 1 to 18. Sometimes it is actually good to read from the different texts that I have given you, even if I read from the story, from the storybook. Because when you read from the different uh, sections of the Bible, the same thing, you will find some more information, some more details that help you to understand and have a bigger picture of what actually took place. So during the week, I want to challenge you this week to read, uh, let's say on Monday, you can read from Matthew chapter 28, verse 1 to 10. And then on Tuesday, you read from Mark chapter 16, verse 1 to 11. Um, Wednesday, you read from Luke chapter 24, 1 to 12. And then finally on Thursday, you read from John chapter 20, verse 1 to 18. If you don't know how to read, you know you can ask mom or dad or auntie to read for you. Are we together? It will be very good for you. And then you can talk about uh, what is the same in the same in the different stories or what is different in the different stories. Okay. I will read for us 
from the storybook. Remember I said I like the storybook because they are pictures, okay? That's why I read from the storybook. And then the storybook also puts together what you find in the different Gospels. At the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and Mary the wife of Cleopas came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came down and rolled the stone from the entrance and sat on it. His face was lightning and his garments were white as snow. For fear of him, the gods trembled and fainted away as if they were dead men. But the angel spoke to the women and said, Fear not, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. And now, go quickly and tell his disciples that Jesus has risen from the dead, and he has gone ahead of you into Galilee, where you shall see him there. There, I have told you. They departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring good news to the disciples that Jesus had risen. And as they went to tell them, Jesus met them saying, All hail! And Mary Magdalene and Mary the wife of Cleopas, they both held Jesus' feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to the women, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go into Galilee, and there they shall see me. All right, there are a few lessons that I need us to learn from our Bible story, okay? It is very interesting that women were the ones that went to go and check on Jesus. So from this, we learn that women have a very special ministry in the kingdom of God. If you want to know your part in God's kingdom, it is important for you to read the word and to pray because we only tell our very close friends our secrets. So you need to read the Bible and to pray so that Jesus can tell you his secrets. Jesus told the women that had gone to look for him at the tomb that I am alive. Even the angel told them the same news. Jesus is alive. And Jesus wants to tell you many, many secrets about yourself, about your family, about Kenya, and about the whole world. But you need to read the word and to love to pray. The other thing that I would like us to learn from this story is that there was an angel of the Lord that went and sat on the rock and the angel is the one who gave the message to the women, the first message to say Jesus has risen. Do you know that the Bible says angels are ministering spirits to those that are being saved? So angels, are, they are there even today and their work is to serve us as we go through life. Yes, there's an angel that can give you a message, just like, just like there was an angel that gave the ladies the message. Or remember Mary, the mother of Jesus and Joseph, at different times, they also got a message from angel Gabriel. So angels are there to serve us in different ways. Uh, in Psalm 91, it says that they lift us up so that we don't hurt our feet. So they protect us. So angels protect us and angels can also give us messages from heaven. The next thing I would like us to learn is that the angel told the ladies that Jesus has risen and then go and tell the others that Jesus has risen and has already gone ahead to go to Galilee. We know that Jesus rose today because today is Easter Sunday and Jesus wants us to tell the others that he has risen. You can tell your cousins that you know that Jesus is alive. Jesus has risen. Or you can tell your neighbor as long as you are not coming close to them. Remember, these days we are only talking from far away. 
but you can still talk to your neighbor over the fence and tell them Jesus has risen. And then finally, when Jesus met the ladies, he told them to go and tell the others that he's alive. When the ladies knew that this is Jesus, they held his feet and then they worshipped. It's very interesting that we keep coming back to worship. We can worship God by singing to him or by praying. Uh, we can also worship God by living for God and making good choices. Remember the last two lessons, it was if don't make the children stop praising me because I put praise in their mouth. And today, the ladies responded by worship and we said we can res we are also supposed to respond to God by worshiping and we worship by singing, by praying, uh, by making good choices, by living for God. Okay, now a few questions. A few questions for us. Tell me, how many ladies went to the tomb to check on Jesus? Were they five? Or ten? Or two? Good job! There were two. High five, high five to your neighbor, but remember we don't touch high five in the air. Well done. Well done, there were two ladies. What were their names? Yes, they were Mary, Magdalene, and another Mary, the wife of Cleopas. But if you just said Mary and Mary, that's okay, because they were both two Marys. There were some people that were so afraid when Jesus was, and there was an earthquake. And then... When they saw the angel, they fainted. Who were those? Were they the Ascari at your school? Or the, the, the Ascari at the church gate? No. But you are correct, they were also guards. Yes, they were guards, but their job was not to guard the church or to guard the school. They were guarding Jesus' tomb. They wanted to make sure that nobody steals Jesus' body. And then, who told the ladies, who was the first person to tell the ladies that Jesus has risen? All right, it was an angel. Yes, and we say that even today, angels have ministry to us. Angels, they can protect us, they can lift us, and make sure we don't get hurt. And we said angels can give us messages, just like he gave messages to the ladies. There is something which is the same about what the angel said and what Jesus said to the ladies. What is it? Did he say you can eat skuma and ugali today? Ah, no! Both of them, they say to the ladies, go and tell the others that Jesus has risen. And even for us, we have to tell our neighbors, we have to tell our friends, we have to tell our uncles, our relatives, that Jesus is risen. Okay. Which means that even today, you can also tell your friends to come and watch this video with you, but they can be watching from their house. It is another way of telling them that Jesus has risen. Well done. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much that Jesus is alive. He's not dead. Thank you that because Jesus is alive, we can celebrate Easter. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for our sins. Thank you for giving us victory. Thank you for giving us courage to tell others about you. We want to worship you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus.
Thank you so much, Mr. Coburn, for the special. Did you hear that he was singing about the cross? Yes, that we come to the fountain, we come to Jesus, we come and we find forgiveness. But in the meantime, we have to continue strong in Jesus. All right. The story of Easter, Jesus' sacrifice, This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. 
He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. The Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus Come in, come in. And give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the son of God. You say that I am. And the council was furious and they shouted that Jesus was guilty and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seems okay to me. They found him to be innocent. So Pilate said, that he would punish Jesus and then release him. What? But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on, his clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own, and then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, if you really are the son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, this man truly was the son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body and found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! Don't be afraid, said an angel. He is not here. He is risen. At this, the woman remembered that Jesus had told them that he would rise again on the third day and ran to go tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. Huh? hey -oh. ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. He taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Remember, I said for this week, 
we are going to be reading from different parts of the Bible the same story. So we said you can read different sections of the Bible. We said on Monday you read from Matthew 28 verse 1 to 10. Tuesday, Mark chapter 16 verse 1 to 11. What's the day that comes after Tuesday? Okay, Wednesday. Wednesday, you read from Luke chapter 24, verse 1 to 12. And then finally on Thursday, you are reading from John chapter 20, verse 1 to 18. Now, after you have read each day, each day you read something, this is your homework. You draw whatever you have read Whatever your mind is telling you, this is what this is what I think happened in the story. You draw. So if you are if you are thinking a lot about Jesus and you think he's shining, 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 then you draw that and then you send the picture to me. But you are going to be thinking about different things because there is the tomb and then there are the guards and then the stone has moved. Uh, and then there's the angel, and then there are the two ladies. You're going to find different things. They spit us somewhere in another story. So you will be sending me different pictures. And then remember, when you draw your picture, you have to, it, the big word is to label. But actually it means you, you, you write, what does this stand for? So maybe this is Mary Magdalene, and this is Mary, the mother of Jesus. So that, you know, when I look at it, I don't think this is Peter. Okay. All right. Have a lovely, lovely week. I'll see you next week.